and welcome back to NCRT class 8th chapter number 10 combustion and flame children in the yesterday's class we uh, we learned about what is mean by combustion and also different examples on the combustible substance we came to know so children in today's session we are continuing with the same topic combustion and here we are learning with the simple experiment children this experiment will give us uh, a is needed for combustion or not it clearly tells us that the combustion will take place only in the presence of air so why do we waste our time children let us look into in detail about it so children what we have to do means first we have to light a candle and we have to place it on a table and such that it have uh, the wooden blocks upon it we have to invert a glass chimney over in the candle means uh, imagine that this is the candle it is burning so we have to inverse the chimney in it and down what we have to keep wooden blocks we have to place means this wooden blocks will help it to supply what oxygen which is essential for burning of a candle and we have to see what changes is happening see here the oxygen is supplying means air is passing through the chimney so what happens the candle starts burning smoothly it don't affects at all so when the same thing if we remove these wooden slits or wooden blocks we have to observe the changes here the supply of air has now reduced isn't it children so what happened the candle slowly started turning off its burning means this thread starts flickering the flame starts flickering and produces what smoke this thing we have observed in the second case so it means that in the second case still some amount of oxygen will be present in the chimney as long as the oxygen is supplied for this candle the, it will start burning so when it starts completely absent in this chimney because from outside it is not entering because we have closed it with the glass chimney over it so the air is not entering as long as the air is present in this glass chimney up to then the candle starts burning when the absence of air occurs in the chimney it stops burning then this candle starts flickering and produces what smoke and the same suppose only for a shorter period of time the uh, air is using by this candle means after a certain time what happens the amount of air which has present in the chimney is completely used by the candle for combustion now the air is not there in the glass chimney so is it possible to burn this candle of course not children isn't it children so what happens the flame uh, is going to stop burning means the candle stops burning it doesn't gives now what your heat or light completely it stops burning so from this experiment we have clearly understand that a uh, burning of uh, any material or substance need what your a this experiment clearly says that burning of a uh, burning of a substance need a means any combustible substance burns only in the presence of a a isn't it children because in the first case imagine the children this is the first case here we have supplied air with the help of the wooden blocks that's why the candle is burning smoothly isn't it children what happened here the candle burns smoothly here we have reduced the amount of air so what happened here this is imagine b it flickers and produces smoke and when the absence of air is occurred then what happens it stops burning isn't it? it it is what see starts burning 
means combustion is not going to take place in the absence of a a is it understand children so any substance if we want for combustion means air is essential got it children in order to understand it in a more easier way uh, let us have a look into a small video clip children let us understand whether air is essential for combustion or not in this activity we will burn a candle in the first case we have to invert the glass uh, where its bases are completely removed and this candle should be that is glass should be placed on the two blocks here means the upon the two wooden blocks the glass has placed whereas in the second case just upon the the uh, plate we have inverted here there is no use of a uh, wooden blocks here and in the third case the glass has inverted uh, and it is completely covered by a glass plate in the first case when the glass has inverted there is a sufficient supply of uh, oxygen so the candle burns completely whereas in the second case only a limited amount of uh, air is present so it flickers and produces smoke whereas in the third case it stops completely due to absence of a air it means that we can conclude that the presence of a air is an essential requirement for combustion children in the same way when we burn a wood or charcoal what happens it starts burning suppose so the same burning wood or charcoal if we placed on a tawa or a any plate children we have to close that uh, with the help of a lid what happens as long as there is a presence of a imagine that this children it's a plate upon it i have placed a small wooden piece which is burning with a flame or you can take it as a charcoal isn't it children you can take either a wood or charcoal children as long as the air is present here this wood or charcoal will start burning so when we close this isn't it when we close this wood or charcoal with a lid what happens there will make to what a reduction in the air here isn't it when we are closing with the lid means what happens the amount of air present in this on this plate is going to be decreased so what happens after a short uh, duration of a time the wood will stops burning it means that we can say that air is essential for burning any substance isn't it children that is what air is essential for burning isn't it and also uh, for example when we take that is if a person catch with a fire what we will do we will cover him with a blanket isn't it we will take what a thick clothes in order to control the fire which has um, happened on him isn't it suddenly uh, usually this we will uh, see or will hear some person has got fire accident isn't it children so when the clothes of a person has got catched by a fire what we will do we will cover him with a blanket why we will do children because by covering with a blanket we are reducing the supply of oxygen there isn't it so the contact between the fuel nothing but a body and the fire is breaking children isn't it and also the supply of oxygen is reducing by this means uh, that is by covering with a blanket isn't it we are reducing the supply of oxygen by doing so we can control the fire it means that here also when we are covering with a blanket means we are uh, cutting down that is what air and why so for children uh, you take a small match stick that is uh, when you hold a match stick does it catch fire on itself of course no isn't it children it it has to catch fire means it has to rub over another surface 
isn't it? The same burning matchstick, if we brought near the paper, what happens? The paper starts burning, isn't it? Before what? The paper was idle. But when you are bringing a matchstick near the paper, burning matchstick, if we brought near the paper, what happens? The paper starts burning. Means before in which condition and when we are bringing the wood, that is matchstick, what is happening to the paper? Means there, there is a certain temperature of a substances which will make them to burn. Understanding children, my point. That is uh, here, that is the matchstick and paper does not burn themselves children isn't it so in order to burn these two they need a certain temperature it means that different materials or substances have a different temperatures isn't it children do you agree this point there is different substances starch burning different temperature isn't it children for example you take the matchstick isn't it it has to be rubbed over a another surface or the rough surface it has to rub then only the matchstick uh, will get fire isn't it that is matchstick will get a fire when rubbing over isn't it children rubbing over other surface see here by the means of rubbing we are increasing the temperature isn't it children so when we increase the temperature of this match stick it starts burning similarly the paper also children when it is idle, it is not burning. But when you brought this burning matchstick near to the paper, it starts burning. So, can you, um, now is it clear to you? There is different substances like matchstick and the paper. These two are different substances here. They also have a different temperatures at which they will start burning. Isn't it? See here, matchstick will, uh, when rubbing over another surface, it starts burning. Similarly, the paper, when a ma burning matchstick is brought near to it, it starts burning. So, by this we can say that there is a certain temperature will be present. Only under at that temperature, the substances will get burned. And that is, um, uh, that is called ignition temperature. What is that children? And the new word comes here is what? Ignition temperature then what is this ignition temperature means it is a temperature of the substance at which that is it is the lowest temperature we can say at which the substances will start burning it means they will ca catch a flame isn't it that is the lowest temperature the lowest temperature at which the substance catch fire and starts burning children and starts burning and this temperature is called as a ignition temperature see initially the mastic uh, was not attained its ignition temperature that's why it has not burned children but the same matchstick when you got rubbed over the another surface what happened it has attained its ignition temperature means below the ignition temperature the materials are not going to burn isn't it that is only when the substances they are attaining uh, that is ignition temperature or beyond that then only the materials will undergo what burning means they will undergo combustion is it clear children my point 
isn't the different substances will have a ignition temperature only at this temperature the substances will get starts burning and they will the, those are called as a ignition temperature isn't it children combustible substance should not have a lower than its ignition temperature for example you take cooking oil children cooking oil this cooking oil at room temperature it start uh, it won't burn at all isn't it but when you that is on placing this cooking oil on a tawa or frying pan when you place this oil on a frying pan and if you have placed this oil on a stove what happens then it will catches fire easily isn't it children and similarly when you take kerosene kerosene oil and wood <coughs> sorry this kerosene oil need a, a small amount of a heat then it will immediately catches what fire whereas the same amount of a heat is not sufficient to burn this wood it means that we can say that to burn the kerosene oil means in order to go the combustion the ignition temperature of the kerosene is very low than that of a wood isn't it because this have low ignition temperature then the tofa wood and because of this reason and this storing is also should be done uh, very carefully children because it have a very low ignition temperature and, the, it, and there are a certain reasons in order to catch what fur so we have to preserve it very carefully and now this activity that is it will shows the essential that is, which are needed in order to understand whether the different substances um, need ignition temperature or not in this activity what we have to do means we have to take a paper cups children and we have to burn this paper cups in the first paper cup we have to pour a uh, that is imagine the children this is what paper cup isn't it and we have to burn this with an empty one isn't it empty cup this is what first case which is of empty means it doesn't contain anything and the same one more cup you take which is made with a paper and burn this also but you have to place it a what water isn't it these are what paper cups this is what second one see children when you are burning the paper cup uh, which doesn't contain anything it easily starts burning isn't it but when you absorb this paper cup which has contained water here the paper is not burning because whatever the heat we have supplied is passing this paper cup to the water in the form of a conduction isn't it children whatever the heat which has got from this uh, burner or any other it has supplied to the water by process called conduction so the paper is not burning here but when you uh, come to the first case here the paper cup have attained already what your its ignition temperature because of that reason it started burning easily whereas this uh, due to containing of a water in the paper cups whatever the heat we have supplied the same heat is supplied passed to the means transferred to the water so the paper has not attained its ignition temperature still it is what low ignition temperature because of that reason the paper cups are not burning here isn't it children and based upon this we have what inflammable materials or substances isn't it children inflammable substances
what are inflammable substances then these are those substances which have very low that is low ignition temperature and they will start burning by catching a fire and that is called as a inflammable substances example you can take petrol children alcohol then lpg isn't it etc these are all what inflammable substances means they have a low ignition temperature and they will catch fire easily isn't it and that is called as a inflammable materials or substances is it clear children in this uh, session we have discussed about how the combustion will takes place and uh, uh, different materials they will be having a different ignition temperature levels we have studied and moreover we have studied about inflammable substances means what